Hey, it's Ohio Jimbo, and I am here to, uh, I'm going to give some quick lessons on artwork. Uh, I've had a recent uh, influx of people requesting art, and one of the big back questions I get is, wh what do you do to get this artwork going, to get this artwork moving? And uh, I do a number of things, but uh, one of the biggest things I do is I have to start someplace. I have to choose a stock. I have to choose uh, some tools, whether I'm going to do pens, pencils, paint, or what have you. And what I like to try to do is keep it simple because people have asked me, man, where do you start? How do you know what you're doing? And I'm going to show you today perspective drawing. Perspective drawing means drawing into a depth, showing something in a distance. Let me start first of all, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but these are the tools. And these tools are, um, each one of them, if you look really, really close here, you can see that they have a letter right here on them. And the letter is B, 2H, and 2B. And what that would be is, if you can remember this way, H is hard. That means it's a harder lead. B is a softer lead, which is right in between. There's actually an HB as well. And there's all series of these numbers, no matter what you want. And then the 2B is a very soft one. When you start drawing and you want to do your sketches, I highly suggest you stay with a hard pencil, which the hard lead just keeps everything really light because you're going to want to sketch things down. And once you sketch them down, you're eventually going to want to start to add some depth and detail. So that will be more darkness and you'll use some, um, whether it's ink or even if you go into paint. So what I'm gonna show you is how to draw. And if these lines aren't coming out very well, we'll back up and we'll go to a B just so I can show you. But here's the basics. If you start with this, you're gonna have a cool photo. You're gonna have a cool image, not a photo. You're gonna have a cool image that you can actually say, here's what I'm seeing. And this is, this is really what's cool about it. And I'm moving these markers here just so we can see. I've got two erasers here just so I can kind of keep them positioned. And I want to make sure that I'm at least getting close to level here because I have no idea if this uh, camera is crooked or if my canvas is crooked. But neither here nor there. I want to show you this because here's what all you have to do. Now, here is a line. If you see this line going across here, I don't know how well you can see that on here. I'm sketching a line horizontally, okay? So if that line's coming horizontal across the board here and we want to start with something. There's a thing called a vanishing point. Now, this is all you want to do as light as possible. I'm pressing a little heavy so you can see it on this. But let's say this is the vanish vanishing point. This is your horizon line right here, okay? And call that what it is. It's a horizon. And this is the vanishing point. So this dot right here in the middle is all going to get erased eventually. So what I want to do is if I'm looking at a Let's say it's an old town, a town, maybe an old Western town or something. And I want to have that Western town setting out in the horizon someplace. I don't worry about the cactus and the, the hillsides or the birds or any of that yet. What I want to do first is get the structure. So if I want to build a building, this is the really cool part about it. Now, you can do this by hand. You could do it just, just simply by coming out from the middle and drawing up like this or down like this. Uh, you can use a ruler if you want. A ruler makes it very, very, very precise. If you wanted to do it, you lay the ruler on there. And this is what's really cool. Draw that line all the way out, all the way out. Draw another line here all the way out. Now, already you're seeing what I'm talking about. That's pointing you into that direction, isn't it? Now, some people use squares. Some people use levels. Some people use triangles. Um, you can use whatever you want to get a good 90 degree angle. But the key thing of perspective drawing is that you do want to push 90 degree angles in here, but you want to push them in this way. So here's where it starts to get really cool. Here is the edge of a building. Now this is up and down again, freehand, freehand drawing. I'm not using any protractors or anything. So this isn't going to be absolutely, you know, a 90 degree from the horizon, but it's pretty darn close. And then here is, let's say this is the leading edge of this building. Now I'm doing this in a very, very heavy force perspective as if I was on a wide angle look to it. Uh, we can do this in a multitude of ways. Let's say um, this being our building, our secondary point to be, 
would be where we're going to make this disappear to the side over here. And it would be way off your screen. So you may make a mark way out someplace and say, okay, it's clear off the page. And if you wanted to, you could use a ruler. You go to where these two lines intersect right here and you can just draw a line back just a little bit right here, just a little bit right there like that. And do the same thing with the lower intersection. So boom, this is where it is. Now keep in mind, here's, here's another thing that you have to remember. This is this horizon line as a the average human being stands and looks at a horizon line. If you went out in your front yard right now and looked towards the, the west and saw the horizon, your typical viewpoint in here is five foot seven inches is where your eyes are. That's the average. Now, some of us are a little shorter. I'm like five foot. You know, my vision's a little bit lower than that. Um, a person who's seven foot tall is going to have a, you know, a six foot three inch height. But anyway, the average height this. So this is what something would look like at seven or five foot seven inches. Right here is about five seven on the closest leading edge. Now keep following me on this because if you're drawing something small, that's one thing, but we want to go to a little bit higher. So let's take this thing up and make it a a bigger building. How about that? Let's and, and you're like, wait, 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 what's a bigger building? The bigger building is I'm making it taller. So now this is my vanishing point up here. Again, this is very extreme, but I want to do this to show you the difference of what this will be. Because if you follow your vanishing points, like I talked about, you now have the structure of a two-story building. And so I'm going to edge this off here, just so you can see. And again, there's no, we don't have any details or anything else. If you really want to get crazy, there's also a vanishing point that goes up this way, but we're not going to go into that right now. We're just going to kind of show what this will do because I want you to see how cool it is to build a building in a three-dimensional drawing. So now, if I know that that's my building, but if I take these areas off here, now again, I'm just showing you this so that you can kind of get an idea we're going to take out the horizon line between here. Okay, everything else is going to be in a geometric shape, which is really cool. You'll see why here in a second. As I'm starting to draw the building, I want to make sure that I have the structure of the building there. So this is a building. But let's say there's a road coming down here. And this road, maybe this road comes right here in the middle of, of this um uh, let's go old town, if you will. Okay, so I know that straight across from here, I'm probably going to have something over here. Now, I could go again into protractors and all kinds of things, but I'm going to just say that I think my uh, my roadway is going to come down about like this. I don't know for sure where it'll be, but um, maybe a little bit further out. So I oftentimes just start sketching it out with my hand until I start figuring out where I want to be with it. And if, let's say there's a building right across the street, We'll, we'll prepare for that, but I want to try to uh, have at least a curb space so where I can start to add a building here in a little bit. And here I'm, I'm freelancing or freehanding this one here because I want to show you that you can just look at that vanishing point and you can start drawing stuff. And when you find out where your vanishing point is on one side over here, you can do the same distance over here and make that be your next line of approach so that you have something going further away from you on that side too. Again, both sides of the building heading towards that dimension. Now, if you notice, we're starting to get a little bit of a structure going here. If I want another building, and this is just the outline, think of the outline of the building. Now, keep in mind, in the old Western days, the front of the building was like this. You know, you'd have a front piece of it, and then there would be more building coming back here on the back side of it, and then this would all be ornate, and there would be a big giant sign up here, and blah, blah, blah. There might be a balcony up here and this could set back a little bit. All of those things start to start to show you if you want to put a door in here, the door is going to be, let's, let's look at this this way. I'm going to just, just sketch this in here real quick. We want a door and the average door is about seven foot tall. So I'm going to take that door following the, the parallels and perpendiculars. Look at this one up here on here. Okay, now the top of the door from the vanishing point again, check this out, is here. Remember our horizon line here? Five foot seven, so we're about seven foot door there. So we've got a door that's going up to here. And then we have 
maybe a balcony that's up on top of here. And then the roof line that's going to be up on top of here. Now, when we get into advanced things, I can show you how to move that balcony back and forth and we can have all kinds of fun with that. But for the most part, this is just to give you a, an idea of a small building on a, um, a little uh, roadway, if you will. Um, and this could have windows. So if this has any windows, look at this. We'll make a light line here and we want the window to be in line with the top of the door. Okay, so we're gonna do it like this. I'm just drawing the lines in here real quick. And if you have uh, different tools, there's different ways of doing this, but I'm just doing it quickly here to show you that the width of that right there is roughly what that width of that window is going to be. And then we're gonna do the same thing over here. And this can all be done eventually. You can do it just by eyeing it up. You don't even have to use uh, rulers, protractors, any type of angles or anything of that sort. So here's the cool thing. Now we have a window, another window, and a door. So having said all of this, this is the small building that we have here. If we wanted to go in and add some detail to this thing, let's say we're gonna add a, some sort of over railing here. And this is going to be another piece on the top. So everything that happens here in perspective will follow. Check this out. This is where it starts to get really cool, in my opinion, because you start to see things develop. And you'll see it develop in perspective. So we know that this now is the front of that. There's another one up here. Do the same thing here. And this is very cool here. Yeah, it's drifting away from you. All right, and then we want to bring those to the back side too, so we know what we've got back here going to our. Uh, auxiliary vanishing point off to the right hand side of our screen here and then we're going to take this down to here and we know the same part on the screen now and this is what i'm trying to say is if you're looking at this this end of the ruler over here stays on the vanishing point this one moves up and down so this allows you to have the vanishing point here and then when we do the front side of the building it's this vanishing point so the two vanishing points here help you determine where this little structure is going to be. So this is probably like a barber shop or maybe a general store right here in the uh, the downtown area. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna put a little windowsill on this one. I'm gonna bring it up here and I'm going to put a top windowsill on that one. We'll go in here and we're going to have a door. Here's the cool part again. This right here, now I can just eyeball because I know that I'm pointing towards that vanishing point back here. But if you wanted to, you could actually lay your ruler on there and you could say, okay, where's my, where's the inside of my door go? Well, there you go. And then you just go straight up the side of this here. Straight up. And that becomes the inside of the door. Now, since we're looking down on it, we know that that's going to be a part of it. We're looking up into the doorway. There's probably going to be a little bit of a inside of the doorway viewable from this side too. So now... The same thing's going to happen to the window. And if our windows are primarily the same, we're going to have a um, little bit of a placement here. We'll take it into here and we'll find out that this is across. So if you look, we have the inside of a box here. And this is the inside of the window. Now, since this side we can't see inside, it cuts it off, see? But if you were starting to do shading, you would wanna darken that part in because this part here is uh, really not being seen by the light. So, now, you start to get the idea of what's happening here. You're seeing the inside of the building. This is inside the doorway, but 
not many windows didn't have window frames. So we're going to give these things a uniform window frame. Now, I can look at this and go, okay, there's the middle of that. That's the middle of that. And if you notice, it's pretty darn close. So when I line these up with the vanishing point, there's the middle of my window. There's the middle of that window. And that starts to show the window. If you look at this, you're starting to see a building. And then, now that upper window is a little bit taller, but I can do this with this window to figure out where is the center of this window. And this is really cool. The diagonals start to play in your favor. So if I go like this, and I'm doing a real light line here, and you'll see why here in a second. Real light line. Line up these two corners, the corners of any square, and it'll give you the absolute middle. So if you follow the middle and then go up and down, now we're going to have, just wait for it, wait for it. We're going to have a window frame that's actually in perspective. That window now is exactly how it should be. The same thing can be done with the distant one. You go from corner to corner, and then you go from corner to corner. And then the middle of that is going to be running parallel with the other vertical lines. And so now your window is back here. So if we wanted to add the depth to that window, we could make that a wider piece here. And again, this can all be shaded. And a cool thing about this, especially if you're working with pencil. Now, I'm not doing this in ink. I'm just doing a quick draft in pencil. Staying with the direction of the perspective allows you to keep that, um, that feeling that it has actually got depth to it. Because if I just scribbled in that shade area and went up and down and everything, it really wouldn't have any direction to it. So you want to do one of two things. Either you follow the perspective grid or you follow the wood grain, which the wood grain wouldn't show from this distance. So there's that anyway. And this is our lintel. Now the door itself, let's say it's closed. So we're going to, we're going to just kind of give it some uh, character here because we want to make sure that, uh, well, keep the flies out because... Grandma's in there making cookies. I don't know why she's in the uh, barbershop making cookies, but she is. And we're just putting a little door on there, and we'll go... Uh, just to separate it from the rest of the doorway there. Again, this is all in one depth of lead, so all H lead, and so I'm not really pushing too much of it. If I grabbed my darker lead, you'll see the difference almost immediately as I take this window and fill it in back here. See how much more black there is to that? That's because this is a B instead of an H, and the B is much, much darker than the uh, H is. The H is a uh, hard, H for hard. Think of it that way. So here we have windows beginning. And again, just using a, a different kind of lead allows you to have the difference. And this is all just, you know, quick thumbnail sketch here. This is nothing that we're going to spend a lot of time on. But I want you to see where this goes from here because it can get pretty exciting. Uh, you start getting into the texture of the of the glass and maybe you want a, uh, a sheen to come across the glass. Like you leave yourself an area there and then you come in here and you fill in everything else. And you'll begin to see that that glass actually has somewhat of a reflection to it. So now you're starting to see the depth of a building in there. Uh, like I said, there's probably a sign up here on top of this. Let's um, just because I was talking about this earlier, I'm going to move this building out of the way so we don't have anything confusing us here. Um, two things you need: you definitely need a good eraser, and you definitely should have some type of a um, um, a brush. And a lot of times, the the brush is an easy thing to use. You just kind of brush across to get rid of all your eraser dust so that it doesn't play with your lead. And make messes on things but 
keeping um, some of these other lines out of here helps. But I'm going to leave a couple on here on purpose because I want to show you, um, for instance, let's say that this building does have another building. Maybe it's uh, down the road a piece. But let's say you wanted to have an identical building, an identical building right down the road here. And if it were down there and it was exactly like this one, we literally would still follow these lines here, but maybe it's right next door to it. Could be possibly right next door to it. So here's where that same thing we did with the window, which we'll call the X pattern here. I'm gonna go from the top of this building to the bottom of this building. And I'm, the reason I'm doing this is because I wanna find out where that middle is right there, okay? And then I'll go from the top of this part to the bottom of this part. Okay. Now where these two intersect, which is right here, that is the center of that building, the center of the mass of that building. So now if I would go straight up and down, straight up and down tells me that this and this are the center of this building. Looks like it's way off to the side. But the cool part about that is now if I wanted to take from the middle of this building, This might be a little bit confusing. There's the middle of the building. See the middle of the building goes straight down through this imaginary line. And I go to the middle of the height of the building. So I take it from here to here. Then in theory, that right there in perspective, matching a parallel would be the exact same size as this building going next door to it. And then so on and so forth. But if you notice, They'll get skinnier and skinnier and skinnier as they go down. So each building looks like it gets skinnier, but it's not. It's just because it's in perspective. So there's the windows and door. Here's the bottom of the windows. Uh, then we know where the bottom of the door is. So this building right next door to it, which would be literally sitting on top of it, would already have its window and door ready to be placed, so the door be here. Now keep in mind, the further away it gets from you, the skinnier that thing's gonna be, so it's not gonna be like a full door like you're standing straight in front of it. It's at an angle, so you're only seeing like a side of it, but that's what this lesson's all about, is to show you perspective. So perspective allows you to see in depth, in a direction, as opposed to what you're seeing, uh, what you think you see in real life. Um, here's another cool part. Let's say this is wood planking. The front of this building is wood planking. So again, we're going to stay right on our right on our vanishing point, and I'm going to hold this here. And the reason I'm using a ruler now is just so that I can kind of keep it simple for you. But let's take a line and draw it up through here, and then let's take a line and draw it up through here. Let's take a line and draw it up. We're going to keep that perspective going. Okay, well, stay with me. You'll see it here in a second. And if you notice, we get to the top of those windows and doors, and wow, it's right in line with it. Keep on this right here on your vanishing point, and you keep adding in between, in between. There we go. Come back and add another plank right between those two because it looks like there's too much space in there. Again, stay on that vanishing point. There's many, many ways you can make that vanishing point more solid. Now, if you're using a, a T square and, uh, and, and an angle, it really would make a difference. You can fly through stuff, but you have to tape your stock down and everything else. Um, you'll get to the point though where you will just you don't even have to use tools. You, you'll be able to see this in your mindset. You'll, you'll say, oh, okay, this has to have more of an angle to it or less of an angle to it. Um, but it is a very, very cool functional piece to have when it comes to artwork because picture this box in the front here as um, maybe that's a box of cereal. Maybe that's a house. Maybe it's a car. Um, when I say that, everything is a shape. Cars are long rectangular shapes. So you'd start with that.
and then you would actually draw it in perspective and it'll help you see exactly what size the, for instance, if you're doing a car, the front tire to the back tire, you know, you always get those all messed up. Well, now you can say, all right, well, I know exactly what the size is supposed to be so I can do this. And once you start doing this, it is just incredibly fun to keep going with this and you'll really impress any of your other friends that are in the art world. If they're not familiar with perspective drawing, you literally will show them how this is done. And when I pull this ruler away, as you can already start to see, the, the panels of the front of this building already start to give it some sort of definition. And if you're doing it by hand, sometimes you can lose a little bit of the, um, the perspective over the course of drawing the front of a building. Um, but for the most part, this is the way to do um, what, you, <laughs> uh, what you wanna do to give that texture to the front of those. And it's interesting too, if you notice the distance from here to here and the distance from here to here, that's what makes that perspective work. And because you're continuing to show that depth and then when you get into this, as you can start to see, that begins to show the building. And now we're all in pencil here. I'll get rid of this other building beside here. We're all in pencil. And if we wanted to start to add ink, we could. And the ink would, would literally start to make this thing pop. It would make it show like it was, um, uh, like it was a photograph. So keeping the vanishing point, for reasons that I'll show you here. We talked about a sign up here. So the sign will be, uh, let's say it's, um, they wanna have a sign up there that says general store or what have you. So we wanna make sure that there's a, uh, somebody cut the boards correctly and it didn't make it, uh, didn't make it obnoxiously crazy crooked. So follow the outside perspective lines and the uh, parallels and perpendiculars always work in your favor when you're just set them in there. So now we've got a sign up here and inside that sign, there may be letters, there may not be, but we know that we're going to have a little bit of a, uh, an in-depth recessed portion to this maybe. So if we do, then we'll drag that frame in a little bit and still following my perspective line back there, I'm going to come up, stop short and then parallels and perpendiculars. So maybe this is a window to the upstairs bar. That, that looks more like it than a sign, but we can make it recess in a little bit. And then if we wanted to put the general store in here, we could put the general store name in here. And I, again, I'm literally freehanding this. So it, your balance, you would want to play with that until you got exactly what you want. But keep in mind, the letters will be very, very, very uh, skinny. And they get wider as they come over. So now we've got a general store going up there on its sign. Let's go ahead and give this some uh, depth up in here. Again, trying to follow a little bit of that um, uh, direction from the perspective. But this one up at the top should probably be pretty dark. So when we get over here, I'll uh, probably switch to a softer lead and let that fill in a little bit more. Okay, so now you're seeing that we have um, a building. We're looking into perspective in that building. And again, that roadway may be really, really, really wide and going down through here. And there might be another building way down the road here a little ways. And if there is, it's probably over here at a different uh, perspective than this one. Let's take that and make that a two-story as well. And following back to our perspective over there. Seeing it? See the building there? Again, we're looking at some uh, 
and what's interesting is depending on how you would look at this and whether you would want to say a wider road or a skinnier road, that's where you would actually put this leading edge. Um, but just discovered this thing probably has some sort of a, uh, a front porch. So we're going to put a front porch on here too. And if I keep, if I start sounding like Bob Ross, I'm, I'm so sorry because my goal is to be able to show you the value of perspective drawing. This isn't about just throwing colors in places, but, um, and, and I'm, I'm doing this as rough as rough can be, but I'm going to skip away from using those tools because here's where I'm going to start adding some of the detail to it. This is very, very cool is because if you have this quote unquote leading edge, um, this right here almost builds the, the character of the front of that building because you have the width of the board itself, which is the fascia of this building. And it's kind of important because you want to have those pieces going the other direction, <laughs> if you see what I'm doing here. So each one of your planks becomes an individual plank now, and they're following the perspective of what we initially drew. Yeah, and this might be one of those bandings where it has a bunch of different, uh, you know, toiletries. This is clothing, uh, tools, farm equipment, and blah, blah, blah. There's all kinds of stuff up on the top of here. Good. And as you want to start getting into the detail, you get to a point where the pencil drawing is pretty much so what it's going to be. And as it's getting done, you may say, well, I think I want to try to add a little bit more to it. You can start to sketch your detail so you can see what it is because if you added ink to this, once you add ink, it is set. It is where it's going to be. But until then, you literally have the ability to do um, numerous things, numerous things with your with your structure. And uh, we'll show you here as we're going through this part here. Um, again, I'm making it a general store from an old uh, western town maybe. Let's just call it that. All right. And here we have... Uh, Play going up, coming around, the rest of this. Now, we have so many different angles going on here that you want to make sure that, you know, let's just do this real quick. Let's uh, let's give the uh, porch some, some boards. The fun thing is, too, is you can play with your uh, your vanishing points and make something really, really distorted or possibly barely distorted at all. And it gives it kind of a realism when you don't distort it much. I'm exaggerating all the moves on this just to demonstrate what the perspective drawing does and why this works. And this is one of the most important parts. Is, and the reason I'm adding these planks going in another direction is so you can get the visual and you can see what's happening with it here. And... If I were using a, uh, a square, then I could actually fly through as a T-square and a um, and a angle that would allow me to just zip along. I could pretty much so have all of the uh, the direction done with this. But I'm going to keep going with this and show you the freehand portion of this. Um, the tendency on this too is you can go and try to. Uh, measure each one of these planks, but I'm going to tell you, you've just got to eyeball it. You got to look at it and say, okay, well, I think this is where this is supposed to be, and let it uh, let it kind of happen that way. So now we've got a front porch on this, and we know that this front porch comes down, and these boards, all the front of these boards are just about maybe uh, an inch in in width. So you don't want to have too much going here, but if you come down through here.
we've got the planks laying on the ground. That is really it. Um, if we wanted to do bricks over here, we could start adding bricks in different patterns, but you know, there's probably not much uh, brick in one of these buildings uh, of the earlier days. So um, maybe it was stucco or what have you. And I'm, I'm doing this again, just to show you how the angle changes and the depth changes, but you really don't have to worry about anything if you're using those vanishing points because it just gives you the guide all the way along. Here's the cool thing. Um, a brick, uh, let's say it's got bricks in it here. We're gonna go along here, we're gonna give it a couple. Bricks have alternating um, mortar lines, right? So you see there's kind of a brick thing going there. Let's go ahead and try one here. I am not measuring these bricks. I'm just eyeballing and highly suggest you would do the same. Um, but if you notice, these lines are in line with each other. These lines are in line with each other. So it allows you to kind of see where you are uh, on the position of these bricks as you're going along. So there's no one, there's no one. Okay. So let's say that's stucco and you want to add some texture to it. You could literally add some stucco around that and it's just exposing only the brick pattern. If you see what I'm doing there, it's almost like we're looking into the, the side of the building and where you're looking, if there's a wider part, that thing has a shadow and it begins to take on the, the depth that you need just simply by adding a darker line to certain parts of it. And the rest of this being stucco doesn't matter. So here's our building. Let's take rid of these lines here. And kind of have a realistic building going there. And that's that's as quick as it gets. I mean, that's a, that's a half hour lesson on drawing in perspective. Now, I'm gonna show you different ways to do that on a whole nother lesson, but I wanted to kind of get this through to you so you could see exactly what was happening here in this kind of an old town picture. And uh, you know, we're, we, we can go in and add some weeds to this and start making it feel like there's some sort of a, maybe there's a cactus back here in the background. So whatever we wanted to do, we literally could start to do that here by adding the detail. Um, let's go ahead and add our ground back here as if this is the only building in the middle of nowhere. Let's get rid of this other U-Haul uh, center here that was here. And someone built this building out in the middle of nowhere. There's the skyline back there. And we're gonna throw in a couple of hillsides. Hey, there we go. That right there begins to finish up. Get rid of your vanishing points so no one knows where you were working on it from. They just think you did that out of your mindset. And you now have a pretty good idea. There you have the beginning of perspective drawing and it's, um, some people call it 3D drawing, but the cool part about this is, and I can show you this later, is as we move the vanishing points out, we can change the perspective of this, but this is just graphite, just pencil. And when you add detail to this, it begins to come to life right in front of you. So I hope this was informative. Uh, hit me with your questions below so I can do everything I can to help you out and guide you along on this. But this will give you the first steps to uh, at least illustrating in perspective. And again, rough surface of it. Um, this is a uh, vellum, it's a Bristol vellum, and it is graphite pencils. I'm using uh, B and H pencils and just a standard eraser. And this rough drawing should get you started. So if you got any questions, hit in the comments below. Um, otherwise, hit me up with an email, and that email is jim at jimhern.com. I am Ohio Jimbo, and I would appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up, and if you would subscribe, right down there, subscribe, so that you'll be alerted when I upload new lessons and new videos of uh, adventure and things to do. So Ohio Jimbo, until the next time.